Hey there, welcome to the story. I'm Ashley Korslin in for Pat Doris tonight. Police oversight has certainly been in the spotlight over the last several years. Well, next week, an independent oversight board could be created to oversee the West Lynn Police Department. City Council is set to take a vote on the idea on Monday, and it all comes amid allegations that the police department did not conduct a thorough investigation into a former local doctor who's accused of sexually abusing more than 100 patients. That's why that's tonight's big story. So earlier this fall, despite the dozens of allegations, a Clackamas County grand jury chose not to indict the ex-doctor. His alleged victims are outraged by that, and some called for more accountability at the West Lynn Police Department as they question how the case was investigated in the first place. Before we air this story, though, we have a warning that it does include discussion of sexual abuse. Even though we begged them to ask for help from other resources, they refused. Their words resonated during a recent Westland City Council meeting. We expect better. We deserve better. Delivering an emotional plea that even brought the mayor to tears. Because if we don't have the resources in this nice of a community to protect our women and children, then what good are we? Thank you. Both Lisa Pratt and Katie Medley are pushing for reform at the West Lynn Police Department. Their testimony came during a meeting where City Council discussed creating a police oversight board to investigate claims of officer misconduct. Pratt and Medley say the department mishandled a sexual abuse investigation into a former West Lynn doctor. Dr. David Farley is accused of sexually abusing more than 100 women and girls over several decades. Many of the alleged victims came to him for OBGYN care at his practice, Westland Family Health Center. In 2019, um, I had a doctor appointment with him, like a repeat pap um, that he had lied about. It was a completely unnecessary appointment and um, he sexually assaulted me in that appointment. And Katie Medley wasn't alone. Her friend Lisa Pratt detailed a similar experience. She says when she was nine months pregnant, Dr. Farley asked her to come to his home for a procedure to induce labor. Um, he swept my membranes, which is a very quick procedure, um, but then it didn't stop. And I remember laying there wondering, what's happening right now? And then I yelled, ouch, really loud. And he jumped and he started fumbling over his words. The Oregon Medical Board investigated Farley over claims that he conducted improper pelvic exams on minors and took photos of children's genitals. In 2020, the board revoked his medical license, citing unprofessional or dishonorable conduct and gross repeated acts of negligence. Farley retired and later moved out of state. In September of 2022, after a nearly two-year criminal investigation, a grand jury in Clackamas County decided not to indict Farley on criminal charges, finding there wasn't enough evidence to prove the claims. Farley still faces a massive civil lawsuit filed on behalf of dozens of his alleged victims. By the time you get to the police, you feel like you're going somewhere that's safe. That Medley and Pratt blame the lack of indictment on how the investigation was handled. They fault the Clackamas County District Attorney's Office, as well as the West Lynn Police Department and lead detective on the case. Uh, he didn't know the questions to ask. In fact, he didn't actually ask me a single question. Um, he, there was no forensic questioning. The women say they felt dismissed and were not taken seriously by investigators. And their investigation, to my knowledge, pretty much consisted of creating a waiting line for the hundreds of women who were calling and telling them, well, you can come give your statement in a month, in two months. I am concerned that this whole investigation was handled in a way that left so many people, victims angry and frustrated. West Lynn City Council President Rory Bialystoski was moved by Pratt and Medley's statements during the council meeting. It was heartbreaking and gut-wrenching. They need to know that and feel that they are believed and valued. 
Bialystowski says it motivated him to expedite the police oversight board. And it certainly made me feel like I wanted to push even harder to get our police oversight board up and running. The board could be used to audit how Westland police handled the Farley investigation. But the push for more oversight stems from a different incident in 2017. That's when Westland police wrongfully arrested a black man named Michael Fesser. An officer arrested Fesser on a bogus theft charge at the behest of then police chief Terry Timmius. Timmius ordered the investigation of Fesser as a favor for a friend who was Fesser's employer at a towing company. Fesser said the arrest was in retaliation for his complaints about a racially hostile work environment. In 2020, the city of West Lynn agreed to pay Fesser $600,000 to settle a lawsuit. Then, in the spring of 2022, the police sergeant who arrested Fesser was criminally charged. None of the officers involved in the scandal work for the department anymore, including former Chief Timmius. They were all fired or resigned. People feel it's long overdue. Bialystowski hopes this new oversight board will help bring a level of transparency to the police department and the city. I'm hoping that it is a step towards restoring the public trust and having a check and balance on the uh, police misconduct process. The five or seven member panel will be comprised of residents from the community. They'll evaluate complaints and provide disciplinary recommendations to the city manager. They'll have access to things that even city councilors and elected officials don't have access to things like police reports, body camera footage. Both the Westland city manager and police chief say they're in full support of the proposal. They also point out that there is currently an outside independent investigation underway into whether the lead detective on the Farley case violated department policy. City manager John Williams gave us this statement saying, we take these allegations seriously and this is why we're hiring an independent outside investigator. The intent of the work is not to re-examine our entire investigation, but rather to evaluate whether he followed policy and conducted himself in a professional manner consistent with WLPD's standards. Police Chief Peter Mahuna also provided a statement saying, when the review is finished, we will be in a much better place to determine where opportunities to get better may exist. We will also address any training needs or policy updating that may be needed. Um, city Council was very empathetic and kind. As for Pratt and Medley, they're hopeful something positive will come from all of this. And we felt heard in that meeting. Um, so I hope that um, while this is a good place to start, I hope some progress is made. They've now written a letter asking the Oregon Department of Justice to intervene and pursue its own investigation into David Farley. I will keep fighting. I will keep going until I know that he is behind bars, until he is where he belongs, because I cannot rest knowing that he can hurt other people. And we reached out for comment to the attorney who was last listed as representing David Farley. We have not heard back. Meanwhile, Westland City Council will vote on that police oversight board at its meeting next Monday. If it's approved, which the council president does expect to happen unanimously, that board could be up and running by the new year. But first, people will be able to apply and then they'll have to undergo some sort of training. City leaders say this board will be a first of its kind model for smaller cities and possibly the only other over oversight board in the metro area, aside from the one that oversees Portland police. So we'll keep you posted on what happens during that vote.